So it might be tough to believe, but since we're creeping into April, that means we're only about two to two and a half months away from WWDC in June, which means iOS 18 is much closer than we think because we will be getting the developer betas in hand right after WWDC. And we got some new leaks and rumors talking about some expectations for iOS 18. And we are getting some nice tangible differences. So without further ado, let's talk about exactly what we know. So before we get into those actual leaks and rumors, I do want to briefly mention the types of iPhones that will be supported by iOS 18 moving forward. So that includes iPhones like the 10R, the 10S, and the 10S Max, and that's probably as old as we're going to get, but that also includes the iPhone SE 2 as well as the iPhone SE 3. So if you have any iPhone between the iPhone 10R, the iPhone SE 2, and then also all the way up to the iPhone 15 Pro Max, we should get support with iOS 18. And I'm sure there's going to be varying degrees of expectations in terms of feature sets and things like that, with the iPhone 15 Pro Max getting everything, and maybe the iPhone 10R getting the smallest amount of changes, but overall iOS 18 will be supported by all of those iPhones. So one of the latest leaks and rumors that we got from Mark Gurman is that Apple should be giving us a lot more customization when it comes to iOS 18 and the home screen. So we've noticed that as iOS 16 came around, iOS 17, we got more and more customization when it came to widgets, when it came to applications, when it came to the lock screen, especially specifically, and then you add in things like the focus mode, which allows you to change up both your home screen and your lock screen, depending on what focus mode you're in. So the customization has been increasing year over year because people don't want to have the same exact screen over and over again and they want to have some sort of differentiation or some sort of I guess personality to their iPhone. So now with iOS 18 it looks like Apple's finally going to break away from their gridlock of applications. As you may know since the very beginning since we were able to move apps around with I believe it was iPhone OS 2 or iPhone OS 3 back before it was even iOS we are locked into that grid format of going from the top left corner with applications, finishing up on the bottom right hand corner of applications on the home screen. So no matter what you do, whether you have one app or you have a full screen of apps, you cannot rearrange them and have them quote unquote free flowing or free floating because Apple just doesn't let that happen. Now we did get something with iPadOS 17, which we got only on the iPad side. So if you do have an iPad running iPadOS 17, when it comes to widgets specifically, so only widgets, not individual applications, widgets are allowed to be put pretty much anywhere on the grid. So there still is a predetermining grid of the actual home screen and things like that, but you can move that widget anywhere inside of that grid as opposed to being restricted to that top left corner, then moving all the way down to the bottom right, which I think is a great little addition and maybe a little bit of an Easter egg giving us some information on what we're going to expect with iOS 18. So with iOS 18, like I mentioned, we should have a much more free flowing home screen. Now, whether or not Apple keeps on and holds on to that grid format, so we're still predetermining where we go with the applications, they might be able to be put anywhere on the screen itself, but it's going to have to follow that grid, I personally believe, because I don't think Apple's going to give us just a free-flowing canvas that allows us to break off of that grid, because then things are going to start to overlap, things could get confusing, but then maybe Apple just wants to give us that full customization. So what I think Mark Gurman is mentioning with much more free-flowing and the ability to put your applications anywhere, I still believe it's going to hold on to that 6x4 or 7x4 grid, depending on which iPhone you have. You're just going to be able to put those applications wherever you want, and same thing goes with the widgets. And then we'll also probably come to iPadOS 8 as well. So that is what I think they mean by free flowing. Like I mentioned, I thought they were going to be able to break away from that grid, like maybe having things diagonal or having only maybe three icons in the middle of the grid and things like that. I don't think Apple's going to let us break away from that grid, but at least we're going to get a little bit more customization on the home screen moving forward. And the next picked update that's going to kind of encompass the rest of the update to iOS 18 and the iPhone is going to be AI and what that means for every little nook and cranny of feature sets for the iPhone itself. So Apple is supposedly working on their own AI features and AI implementation. They've spoken about maybe using Google Gemini as more so of a chatbot kind of implementation, but the way that Apple is going to kind of implement this AI in their large language model is going to be very different to just kind of having a chat GBT built into your iPhone. I think Apple, the way they're going to kind of deploy this is going to be putting AI into different applications and into different kind of situations and into different features and software features that kind of help make your day-to-day -day life easier. For instance, maybe when you do pull up Siri, it's going to know that you're in the room. It's going to know that you're in a certain location. It's going to know what you normally ask. So it's just going to kind of predetermine what you're already going to ask and things like that. Same thing comes with Apple Music. If Apple implements an AI assistant into Apple Music, then it's going to be easier for Apple to kind of find music that you already like that's very similar to what you're currently listening to. And then maybe it'll know to break away from the norm and kind of give you some other ideas of what to listen to on the Apple Music front. 
Apple should also be putting that into their iWork suite. If you guys remember iWork, it's pages, numbers, and Keynote. So putting AI implementations into that to kind of help you with content creation, both on the written side and copy side, as well as the more visual and kind of PowerPointy, maybe even video wise, Apple could be adding AI integration into iMovie and things like Final Cut Pro, just to make your life easier. It's gonna get you from point A to point B a little bit quicker, a little bit more efficiently, with it getting it correctly maybe 98% of the time. I don't think it's gonna be a cut and dry situation where they just throw kind of an AI application at you and then let you figure it out. I think Apple's gonna help you figure out exactly what AI is going to do to your iPhone experience moving forward. But let me know in the comment down below what you think. Do you think it's something that Apple's gonna implement correctly? Are you happy that Apple's gonna be bringing this on? I think Apple's gonna bring on AI, not in what the current AI status is, but they're gonna bring it in the Apple way, right? They're gonna make it so it doesn't seem like you're using AI and it doesn't seem like you're kind of doing anything differently. It's just gonna make your life a little bit easier. And I can see this kind of taking off with things like AI wellness coaches with both kind of the meditation side that Apple's been adding to the health side, as well as Apple Fitness and Apple Fitness Plus, kind of giving you maybe a AI personal trainer that helps you with your food and your workouts and things like that, as well as maybe daily check-ins where now you'll have this AI feature that might be included as a service in Apple One, where you no longer have to kind of pay for a virtual trainer if you don't want to. And then same thing applies for in the spotlight search. Now I use spotlight search almost every single day because I don't like to have applications just sitting on my home screen if I don't need them. So spotlight search, getting AI implementation is gonna be great. And spotlight's already a very good application or very good feature, but adding AI into it is just gonna make it that much better. I just hope that AI kind of helps out Siri like holistically. Siri is still very, very subpar. The other day I tried to kind of have a continuous conversation with Siri. I basically asked Siri like, hey Blank, how old is this actor? And then I tried to continue the conversation with saying, how many kids does this actor have? And it just pretty much lost where it was after that first question, which again, compared to what we have currently in 2024 with ChatGPT and with Google Gemini and everything else that's around, Apple should really be increasing the standards of what Siri has to offer, even if it is some simple factual kind of language model going forward. But that is what we have so far with iOS 18. Like I mentioned, there isn't gonna be too many visual changes and tangible changes, because I think we've reached kind of peak iPhone, both on the hardware and even on the software side. Sure, there's little things that can be changed, little kind of nuances that maybe people want, like the notification center and control center and things like that, maybe visual appeal in terms of what aesthetically looks better now in 2024 versus what looked good in, 20, in 2014. But I think from a actual feature set standpoint, I think we've reached full maturity. It's just a matter of now making things easier, making it more efficient, making kind of bringing things that matter to you at the forefront. So iOS 18 is gonna really focus on just making your life more simple with your iPhone and having your iPhone be more of a tool that gets you through your day to day. So let me know with a comment down below what you think. Do you think it's a good thing Apple's bringing all this stuff over? Should Apple leave it as is? What do you think about the home screen customizations? Are you excited to see what iOS 18 entails and what that means for the rest of the iPhone lineup, whether it is iPhone or iPad OS or Vision OS? I'm always very curious to find out exactly what you guys think. And let's see exactly how Apple ends up implementing all this iOS 18 hoopla. So again, WWDC should be sometime in June. We'll get our hands on that developer beta right after, but we probably won't see it in the public until mid to late September of 2024. But that's going to do for this video. If you made it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so that I know you made it to the end. And if you guys want to watch more videos like this one, click on one of these right here. And until next time, I'm Fernando, and I'm out of here, everybody. Peace.